Good day. To, uh, today we have Kathy Davey from Ashburton Investments with us. Um, there's been a lot of talk in the markets around mega cap stocks and quality stocks. And quality means different things to different people. But we're going to cover mega cap first. Kathy, what is a mega cap company in your mind? Mega cap companies are generally thought of as those companies whose total value of all shares in issue is above 100 billion USD. So just to put that into context for you, that's over four times the size by market capitalization of Africa's biggest bank, which is First Rand Bank. So that is fairly sizable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that gives us an idea of what a mega cap looks like. What desirable characteristics would you like from a mega cap stock? I would say one of the biggest advantages of mega cap companies is diversification. Uh, mega cap companies are generally much more diversified than smaller companies as their businesses typically span geograph uh, geographic regions and they also have multiple products. Most of the time you'll find mega cap uh, stocks listed on developed market exchanges, but the underlying exposure is usually far more global. Um, so just to explain why global diversification is attractive, you need to consider that at some stage all businesses will experience some level of disruption. However, being well diversified as a company means that difficulties in any particular region or with a particular product will not cause critical damage to an organization. Uh, so for instance, consumer goods company Unilever is very well diversified by both geography and I think they operate in just under 200 countries. Um, and uh, the company also has an extensive product range across around 13 core business sectors. In addition, Unilever has 60% of its revenue coming from emerging markets, which means if developed market growth slows, investors can still access the growth coming from emerging markets, or of course vice versa. Um, yeah, and lastly, I guess I would just say that good diversification also means that a company's profits um, become more predictable as really earnings are smoothed out to a certain extent. So that's uh, diversification, not diversification. So that gives us uh, an intro into that. So I guess economies of scale what, would also be an advantage? Yes, so mega cap companies typically have substantial economies of scale. Which also means, if we look at it from a financing uh, perspective, rating agencies typically provide higher ratings for mega cap companies. And of course, um, this in turn allows these companies to borrow for less. Economies of scale also leads to operational advantages as it enables some mega cap companies to be able to provide lower cost solutions um, or uh, lower cost solutions than others. So if we look at Visa, for instance, um, Visa is double the size of its closest competitor, which is MasterCard, and significantly larger than most of its other competitors, which gives the company a considerable um, pricing advantage. Uh, and then I guess from a human capital perspective, mega cap companies have the ability to attract and retain talent from small organizations. Or of course they can simply just go out and buy a smaller organization along with their market position and technologies. Uh, we saw this recently with Alphabet. So Alphabet is the parent company of Google, who, um, which most people will know. And they recently announced that um, the company would acquire Fitbit by the end of the year. So just like that, Alphabet has adds about 28 million active users and over 5% of the global smartwatch market. And of course, along with that comes a highly successful team. Hmm, fantastic. Another question I get asked often is liquidity. I would imagine liquidity with mega caps is absolutely not a, not a question in terms of tradability. Yes, yeah, so shares in, in mega caps are typically highly liquid. Um, and this is really because market participants regularly trade in their stocks, which ultimately results in lower transaction costs. The main reason being is because the bid and ask price is usually low for mega cap stocks. So just to explain that, that's the price that someone is willing to pay for a stock relative to the price that someone is willing to, stock, uh, to sell a stock for. Um, this in turn enables positions to be bought or sold more easily than with smaller companies. Now, if we were, for instance, to move uh, to a risk-off environment, the relatively lower liquidity in smaller cap stocks can mean that um, share prices fall more dramatically than they do for larger companies, where there are just more natural buyers of those shares. Okay, yeah. Okay, but time for a nasty question, Kath. Surely not all mega caps are great stocks. Yes, yeah, so that's right. Um, so. 
what we would generally look for when evaluating the investment case for mega cap companies is whether the company has found some sort of business niche which has facilitated growth. Um, so, for example, firms that have even uh, either generated some form of intellectual property, a product or technology, or have a brand synonymous with quality. These sorts of companies would generally have large research and development and marketing budgets, which make competing with them a substantial challenge. So as an example, uh, let's look at the healthcare sector. Bringing a new single pharmaceutical product through all three phases of clinical trials typically, typically costs upwards um, of 1 billion USD. And of course, that's with considerable risk along the way. Um, AstraZeneca, for instance, has nine such products in the late stage pipeline, which would be very difficult to compete with without a significant budget. Um, another great example of an investment we would look at um, is Microsoft. So over the last 12 months, Microsoft has spent almost 17.5 billion USD on research and development. Let me put that into context for you. There are only slightly over 20 listed software firms in the world with enterprises values, enterprise values over that amount. And what this really means is that challenging the firm's dominance in any number of its fields would require very deep uh, pockets, which of course is very difficult for smaller companies. All right then, but then what, what mega cap companies would you steer clear of? Okay, so... Most likely, I would say those companies operating in industries facing major structural headwinds, and um, perhaps due to environmental or other fa uh, social factors. In addition, companies which began as state-backed entities, so the reason for this is state-backed entities are typically inefficient um, and are not staffed by entrepreneurial management, which generally makes returns on capital for these companies low and growth unattractive. Um, yeah, I would also say highly indebted mega cap stocks um, can also be unattractive as they have very little financial flexibility to grow. So that's organically, but also if there is an attractive company that the company would like to acquire, um, if the company doesn't have uh, the, the financial flexibility when that company came up for sale, they, they couldn't uh, make that acquisition. So these companies will find it difficult to take advantage of as many opportunities as lower leverage firms um, can without potentially inviting in excessive levels of risk. Um, yeah, so to give you an example of that, one of my uh, favorite companies, Kerry Group, so um, it's an island-based food ingredients company, and one of its most attractive qualities is its relatively low levels of debt. So the company operates in a highly fragmented sector, and it has a strong balance sheet, which means it can continuously go out and purchase new technologies around the world to enhance its current product offering. Without this sort of financial flexibility, the company would not have this advantage. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess lastly, we would also steer away from investing in regions where there's significant expropriation risks, so, such as Russia, for instance. Um, for us, this just makes companies uninvestable, in our opinion, and especially when you're running concentrated portfolios, which we do, it just adds too much risk to, to the portfolio as a whole. So even so, with um, mid-caps, micro-caps, and mega-caps, it's the same. Uh, biggest isn't always better, but you mm -hmm. still feel mega-caps is where you want to play, even though uh, bigger is doesn't always mean better. Yes, I mean, it, I guess it really comes down to uh, your investment philosophy and the research that you're doing as a team. Um, and that's why I've been focused on the attractive characteristics of mega cap companies, which we've just discussed, is so important to finding what we would refer to as quality investments. Um, so let me just summarize that for you. Um, I would say that um, our team of analysts are continuously looking for companies which have, firstly, sustainable business models. So companies with some sort of competitive advantage, which we can see pursuing into the future, whether it be brand loyalty or a certain technology, we basically want to be sure this company will be operating successfully into the foreseeable future. Um, balance sheet strength. We want the company to have the financial flexibility to enable growth. Um, we prefer a high level of predictability and earnings, so good, which comes along with good diversification and companies with a relatively uh, defensive nature. 
um, and also the ability to generate returns above the company's cost of, of capital is very important. And I guess one thing we haven't mentioned today is, is shareholder treatment. Um, so this is shareholder treatment by, by both the company and the management of the company. As minority investors, we want to know that we will be treated fairly um, should certain situations arise in, in the future. I guess basically we like to invest in companies which make us sleep easily at night while the companies continue to generate good returns for our investors. Cathy, I'd like to thank you for your time and giving us a direct and concise uh, view of mega cap and quality and your version thereof. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.